Given the COMFORT-1 and COMFORT-2 trials, which randomized patients to ruxolitinib versus either placebo for the COMFORT-1 or best available therapy for COMFORT-2, these were patients with higher risk disease, intermediate 2 or higher, or patients with symptomatic splenomegaly as eligibility criteria to enter on either of these studies. And what was discovered was that treatment with ruxolitinib improved the uh, response in terms of shrinking the spleen, number one, and number two, patients had improvement in constitutional symptoms. What was surprising is that both COMFORT-1 and COMFORT-2 showed that patients who started ruxolitinib had a survival advantage against those patients who randomized to placebo and COMFORT-1 or best available therapy in uh, COMFORT-2. And this raises the issue. Not only are you trying to ameliorate symptoms in patients who have symptomatic splenomegaly or constitutional symptoms, but for patients with higher risk disease, based on a DIP score of intermediate two or higher, you may actually be improving survival. This case represents a young patient with uh, primary myelofibrosis. The average age is in the 70s, so many patients are older. This is a young patient, and that's why the, the role of stem cell transplantation must be uh, considered. We don't have long-term uh, uh, good observational studies for patients with low risk or asymptomatic intermediate one to determine how many of these patients will eventually, and over what period of time, uh, will require therapy. But it is important to follow these patients, those patients with low risk or intermediate one who are asymptomatic carefully. The, this is a chronic disease. This is a progressive disorder. And most patients throughout their lifetime, whether it be five years or 10 years, will develop progression of their symptoms and or their disease requiring uh, intervention. It is important, however, to acknowledge that patients who are symptomatic at presentation or those patients who with higher risk disease defined as a DIP score of intermediate two or higher really need an intervention at this point because given this, the data from COMFORT-1 and COMFORT-2 with improvement in survival, it's hard not to want to treat those kind of patients which will improve their overall outcome. Splenomegaly is a hallmark of uh, patients with chronic primary myelofibrosis or secondary myelofibrosis, those patients that have transformed from an underlying uh, disorder such as polycythemia vera or essential thrombocythemia. The presence of splenomegaly is part of the diagnostic criteria for myelofibrosis, and patients with progressive splenomegaly often will develop symptoms of splenomegaly, and this can lead to uh, presence of early satiety and weight loss. In those patients who are symptomatic from their splenic enlargement, it's important to initiate therapy regardless of where their DIP score is. Age is a criteria for all of the prognostic scores. The original IWG by Cervantes, as well as the DIPS by Passamonte, both incorporated age. You have to remember that age is a linear variable. Patients get older, and this is a disease of older folks, typically in the late 60s, early 70s. It's clear that age impacts on overall survival. Uh, age by itself, however, doesn't necessitate uh, initiation of therapy. It's in con uh, concurrence with symptoms as well as risk score which includes disease criteria, such as the karyotype, other mutations, uh, the peripheral blood smear. In this particular case, in spite of the patient having a young age, uh, the, there is enough criteria with, with her symptoms as well as her anemia uh, to warrant therapy because of her higher uh, IWG or DIP score.